By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to a brand new episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a nice match of X points magic for you. I am playing against friend of the channel, Yurian, and he's bringing a mono blue robots deck to the table. He's playing Sages of Latinam, Copy Artifacts, Triskelions, you name it, he's got it. This is one scary deck and I'm battling him with an equally scary deck in my opinion because I'm playing with a mana burn strategy. I'm playing a power surge red and white deck that I've called Dragon Search because I'm also playing with Shivan Dragon and Dragon Whelps. I mean, this is really a favorite deck of mine to play when I'm playing X Points matches. Um, but before I start with the deck decks, before I explain more about both of these decks, I've got lovely deck photos of both of them, by the way. I know that some of you also prefer to first go to the match, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find more information about the rules. So if you wanna know more about X points and Atlantic rules, check out the description below for more information. And in that same description, you will also find a link to my Patreon page. That is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you want to support the channel and maybe also make a video with me as well, please check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks to find out how you can do that. Okay, and now that you're all up to speed, I'm going to start with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Yurian Bluebots. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Yurian. So this is really blue bots, right? You're playing blue and artifacts. It's a great combination. Why? Well, first of all, blue gives you access to copy artifact, an insanely powerful card. One blue and one for this in Shaman, that when it comes into play, you can choose any artifact on the battlefield and copy it. Hey, it's called copy artifact. It does what's in the name. And I mean, this is super good with cards like Triskelion, right? Because Triskelion comes into play with three plus one plus one counters. So if you start copying this six casting cost spell for just one blue and one, that's great value, you know? All of a sudden you've got a whole army of Triskelions and that is very, very scary. And he is playing with four mana vaults and four Felver stones. So he wants to obviously use that uh, mana power to get those Triskelions out early, copy them as fast as he can, and then kind of dominate the board from there. Now, what I really like about this deck is the inclusion of a full playset of Sages of Latinam. Sages of Latinam are great to give you value for your artifacts. Let's say you're dropping your Mana Vault, you tap your Mana Vault for mana to cast your Trike, you can then get the three mana, and also you can sack it to your Sage of Latinam to draw a card, because Sage of Latinam is a creature from the Antiquities, a one-two for one blue and one, so the same casting cost as the copy artifact, and it reads tap, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. It is that simple, and you can do this as a fast effect, right? So whenever when somebody plays, for example, a disenchant on your trike, you can say, you know what? I'm gonna deal three damage to you, take the counters off, and then I'm also gonna sack it to the sage and draw a card. I mean, there's just so much value. All, all of a sudden, all your artifacts replace itself with a new card. And that may not seem like much, but trust me, card advantage is everything in Magic, and you know, it is huge in this deck. It is really, really good. Um, when we're looking at the rest of the deck, we're just seeing, you know, the, the the blue power, Ancestral Recall, Time Twister. We also see Mana Drain. We see Brain Geyser. Those are some seriously strong cards. And I guess that's also where the points went to when Yurian was making this list. Now, we also see an, uh, Hercules Recall. Again, I really like this inclusion. It means you can get back all your trikes again, play them out again, you know, get the counters back on them again. And also, you know, if you have tap Mana Vaults and for some reason you need the mana or you don't want to take the damage from it and you don't don't have a sage again Hercules recall get it back another thing i really like about Hercules recall you can use it on your opponent as well i mean a lot of players play with so many artifacts these days and especially in x points where you don't see a lot of moxen but you see a lot of felwer stones instead sending back those felwer stones i mean that's tough you know your opponent has to reinvest mana in them again that is like so i think in x points maybe Hercules recall is even better than like in other formats but Maybe I'm wrong. Feel free to, to of course, disagree with that. Uh, we also see some cool cool little cards in here. We see one Vesuvian Double Ganger. It's really a favorite card of mine. It is kind of hard to play. I tried it out as a one-off in some decks and usually end up taking it out despite the epic art. So I really appreciate Yurian playing this card. Um, I also like the inclusion of Drafna's Restoration. So it's a card from Antiquities for one blue, a sorcery, I believe. And you can get cards from your graveyard back on top of your library and you can place them there in any order. So it's kind of a nice little 
neat little trick it, it's especially nice maybe if you have some artifacts to sack to the sage as well because then you know what's going to be on top what you're going to draw so yeah i kind of like it um an interesting choice here that yurian has made is going for the four air, air elementals you know the four four for five somewhere here i think maybe you could have gone for um i kind of forgot the name now but it's a four four flyer from antiquities it's not as good as air elemental but you know because it's an artifact creature you you can also copy it with your uh, with your copy artifacts and you can sack it with your sages. On the other hand, you could also argue that uh, maybe by playing with an air elemental, you don't have to worry. You still have to worry about artifact hate, but at least this is a card that can work around the artifact hate, right? A card like Dust to Dust or Shatterstorm by the opponent doesn't hit quite as hard when you have your air elementals also there, I guess. So it also makes your deck a little more versatile if that kind of makes sense you know if you know what i mean anyway um this is the list of yurian it's looking like a cool deck to play and a very strong deck as well now let's take a look at my deck dragon's search and here we see my deck dragon's search now i don't play atlantic formats that often so when i was preparing for this match i thought you know what it's kind of fun to or play with uh, a lot of Fallen Empires in my deck, which you can see there are no Fallen Empire cards in here at all, or go with Mana Burn, because in Swedish, what I usually play, you don't have Mana Burn. So then I thought, okay, let's abuse Power Search, see if I can do that. So Power Search is an enchantment for two red that reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, Power Search deals X damage to that player where X is the number of untapped lands they controlled at the beginning of this turn. So it kind of remembers how many lands you had untapped at the beginning of their turn right so it's kind of cool and because you're playing with mana burn like when you're playing swedish you can just say i'm just gonna tap out completely i'm not going to use the mana who cares you're not taking mana burn but because this is a format with mana burn that actually matters so what's important is yes i can use this to deal a lot of damage to my opponent but i also have to think about how am i going to use all the mana in my deck now there are a few really nice outlets right the obvious ones here of course are the red creatures in the deck we've got four granite gargoyles four dragon whelps and two sheep and dragons that means that all my leftover red mana i can just pump into the dragons deal some extra damage get some extra toughness for the gargoyles you know and i don't have to take any damage from the power surges um, and then there's another really good mana sink in this deck and that is mishra's factory mishra's factory is a card that of course you can turn into a 2-2 assembly worker for one mana but the nice thing is in this case you can do that as many times as you want so even if it's already an assembly worker I can pay one mana again make it into an assembly worker again it's still a 2-2 nothing changes but that's how it works so I can put as much mana in there as I want another nice sink here are the two gem day tomes so of course that's four to tap to draw a card um, and yeah so if I have mana left I can always use that for the gem day tomes as well so the strategy here from the power search perspective is quite simple right it's kind of easy for me to dump my leftover mana because my whole deck's built around it but for my opponent that's probably going to be a lot tougher at least that's the theory so we're kind of going to try out if that really works and then of course because i'm playing uh white and red i have a lot of really good answers i've got disenchants i've got swords to plowshares for the smaller creatures like for example um you know like the 2-2 flyer if not expector i've got like uh like lightning bolts to deal with those if i play against like an aggressive uh, green deck you know it's usually creatures on the ground with green I've got my earthquake so I've got just a lot of weapons that you know white and red gives me and talking about weapons I also have access to uh, to blood moons I'm playing two blood moons main so if I play against those multiple color good stuff decks I can use my blood moons I can also board in two more blood moons from the side that's by the way why in the sideboard you do see a single basic planes if I choose to go for the strategy of just playing with a full four blood moons I'm probably also going to board in that one um, that one basic planes to make sure that I still have enough uh, enough planes in my deck to cast the white side of, of my deck as well. And if you look closely at this video, by the way, I've marked the cards with points in them by uh, by a counter. So there's a glass bead on the cards with points. So I've got my three mistress factories. That's three points in total. I've got my soul ring. That's another three points alone. So then I'm on six. And I also have my uh, Wheel of Fortune, which is two points. And I have my Land Tax, which is also two points. So together, it makes a solid 10. So I hope I didn't forget any cards and that this is actually a legal deck. Because when I play X points, I tend to just make these mistakes. Sometimes I play with like two points. Sometimes I play with 11 points. 
because I don't play the format that often. So um, yeah, let me know in the comments. I think this is all right. I checked it like three times, but ever since I made the mistake a few times, I'm always kind of like, Nervous is a big word, you know, but I'm very aware of it. So I just want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes there. Um, in this matchup, by the way, because I just mentioned the sideboard very briefly, I think um, the Red Elemental Blasts are going to be uh, very, very handy for me. Now, before we continue with this video, I would first like to thank 3 for one Trading for sponsoring this video. 3 for one Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for Vintage, Legacy and, yes, yes, old school magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun buying cards at 3 for one Trading and now let's continue with our X Points match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm the player on the right, of course, with the Timmy playmat. It looks like I've taken a mulligan. I'm on the draw here. I'm playing a red, white, dragon search. Starting with the planes here. Yurian was on the play, starting with an island. Oh, look at this. Finding the one Lantex in my deck. So I've got one Lantex in the deck. You're looking at it right now. And one of the funny things here is if you have a turn one tax, your opponent probably thinks, okay, he's, he's playing maybe White Weenie, Armageddon's, or maybe if he sees a red mana, he's going to be like, okay, he probably plays like Lance Edge, Land Tech. So just by just playing that one tax at turn one, he's not going to expect to to see to play against a Power Surge deck, right? Anyway, um, I can now activate my uh, Land Tex in my upkeep after that second island was played by Yurian, and he's got now a Sage of Letnam, the 1-2 creature from Antiquities. You can tap it to sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. It's uh, it's really good actually, that, that one. And uh, I'm gonna go up a lot here. So I'm gonna go up to eight and draw. So nine in total, I believe. Would be ideal if I can just find Mountain Bolt. That would be my perfect line, I guess. There's the Mountain, okay, tapping the Mountain. Mountain Bolt, Bolt the Sage here probably, exactly. I mean, you don't wanna have a situation where he untaps with the Sage, plays Mana Vault, taps Mana Vault and a land to play like an artifact creature like Suchi. I mean, we know he doesn't have it now because we looked at the deck list beforehand, but I don't know that at this moment in the game. Okay, there's another uh, Sage of Letnam playing a quick Swords on it. Does mean that he's going to go up to 21, but really trying to kill the uh, the Sages here. Missed his land drop, by the way, or decided not to play it out because of the tax. Both is very possible here. And then the question is, am I going to play something out? No, I'm not. So I'm saying, you know what? I'm just going to wait till you start casting. So Yurian here playing a Felwer Stone. I wonder if I'm going to fire off a Disenchant if I have it, of course, drawing uh, my card for turn. So I guess I didn't. Tapping two. Okay, there's a Disenchant. So I'm assuming I found this Disenchant from the top of my deck or else I should have done it on end step, in my opinion. But um, yeah, playing it as a Sorcery. There's another land so I can have tax. Ooh, Chaos Orb though. Gonna flip the orb on the tax. So probably gonna lose the tax here. Let's go. Oh, it's a miss. Oh, I'm so lucky. Oh, I am so lucky. That is, and actually I've got a confession to make. I've been missing some flips lately. I need to, I need to practice my skills. I actually missed on stream couple of last month or something a couple of weeks ago that was really doesn't happen to me often anyway taking out three new lands now because any missed a flip and because he played his third land i've got tax activation so it's double punishment here for yurian so meaning i go to 11 cards i believe it's quite a lot so what would be nice for me here is to do land and at least play something else out like granite gargoyle would be good what would be even better is you know maybe soul ring into gargoyle that would be really nice or Felwer Stone, another Felwer Stone. Ooh, I'm gonna just gonna discard, play one land and discard. That's bad. Discarding a Plains and a Mountain. Passing the turn to Yurian, who's on three lands himself. Okay, also discarding another Mountain. So I guess I uh, still had too many cards in hand. So I'm back, I'm back on seven, but this is not what you want to do. This is not what my deck... Is supposed to do. I'm just discarding three basics that it basically just drew with the tax, so that's that's not good. Not finding any of the Felwer stones, I guess. Playing another land. 
Tapping three. Okay, there's a gargoyle. Probably found it from the top. So six in hand, passing the turn. Okay, Yurian also finding a land. Ooh, Mana Vault tapping the Vault. Are we going to see a trike here? That would be really bad. Oh, Triskelion. Because now he can kill my Gargoyle because I tapped out with the Mountains, probably indicating that I have a Swords in hand still. But at this point, you don't really want to play the Swords because, I mean, even if I play the Swords in response, he can kill the Gargoyle. So looks like yeah, exactly two damage on the Gargoyle and then it's a 2-2. Yeah, this is why the trike is so good. It, it just it gives you value, you know? Now you've killed a creature on my side of the board and you still have a 2-2, which is also a great target for your copy artifact. He's a dragon whelp on my side. Okay, that's, that's kind of good. Now I have to kind of cross my fingers and hope that Yurian doesn't have another copy artifact. Remember, he's playing four copy artifacts in his deck as well, playing a, uh, playing a duel here, the plateau. So that's kind of good, like... My ideal scenario here would be, okay, Yurian's choosing to untap the Mana Vault. What I want to say is my ideal scenario would be Yurian playing out Copy, and then in response, I would play Swords if I have it on the Trike, and he would be forced to copy his Mana Vault instead. But uh, none of that happened, so um, it's not relevant. You can forget about it. It's my turn. Just drew a card. Let's see what I can do. Are we going to see a Power Search? That's what I'm wondering. Is it even good for me now? Probably not. I can, I can swing in for five, I guess. I mean, the trike doesn't fly. I can just deal some damage. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here, by the way. Just really hesitant. So I've got a lot of options, I assume. There you go. Finally attacking here with the whelp. Pumping it up to a 3-3. Three, three. So I'm going to put Yurian on 18, I guess. Unless it's gotten unsummoned, but yeah. Why would you play that now? And probably if you had one, you'd rather play it on your own trike. But Julian dropping to 18. Okay, there's a plane tapping four. We're gonna see a dragon whelp. Ooh, jam day tome. So not another dragon whelp, but jam day tome instead. That's kind of nice. That's gonna help me. Can use that excess land to start drawing cards. And of course, Julian here can uh, attack. I mean, I just have to hope that he doesn't find another Triskelion. Gonna tap. Uh oh, is he tapping six? Oh no, another trike. I think this is a bye bye for the whelp. And this is why the trike is so good, right? Even a one one trike in his deck is good. You got a co copy target, you got a target for the sage to draw cards. I mean, I remember when I was a little Timmy, I really didn't like trike. I was like, it's six mana and it, it doesn't even fly, you know? You can cast a Shivan Dragon or a Ma Moti for six, but you know. After seeing the trike and knowing what I know now about, about magic, it, it's such a good card. It's, such, it's, it's one of the best artifact creatures, maybe the best artifact creature. Although you also have, of course, Mishra's Factory as an artifact creature, I guess. But anyway, let's not, uh, let's not go into that debate. So he's passed a turn back to me, taking two damage from his attacks. I'm on 18. I mean, I still have the book. Two red? Are we going to see Power Surge for two red? Yay, Power Surge! I'm so happy. That was the idea, you know, to play Power Surge and see if it works. So this is Power Surge hitting the board. Let's see if it works. Of course, Yuri on here could... I mean, can he counter? He's got a Mana Drain in his deck. But I think apart from that, there's not much he can do. Doesn't have any enchantment removal, I believe. Does play with Nevenerals Disc in the sideboard. Could be a good inclusion after, after uh, sideboarding. But for now, it looks like he's going to take two whole points of damage from the power surge. Or not. Okay, there's Hercules Recall. This is interesting, right? He can play Recall in response. I'm going to draw a card, it seems. It's interesting because he can Recall me. Yeah, he's going to play it on me, which I kind of understand because you set me back with the Gem Day Tome. He's doing this, obviously, in my end step. But he also could have done it on himself to, you know, get back the Triskelions and they would come back with all their counters and, of course, the Mana Vault. So both, both sides, they have pros and cons, right? Both decisions. Because I also like it that he's, like, keeping me away from my book and my book activation. I think that's also smart. Attacking me here for three, so I'm going to drop to 15. There's a Bolt. Okay, Bolt on. Okay, Bolt on a life total. That is interesting. Interesting. Why? Question mark. I mean, then I don't take damage from the search. I see that, but one damage is that really that bad? And 
Why not on the Triskelion instead of on the, on the life total? Okay, there's the book back again. I guess I really didn't want to take the damage and didn't want to kill a trike. Tapping three. Oh, Earthquake. Okay, that explains it. Earthquake for two. So going to kill both the trikes. Going to take a damage from the counter. And of course, two damage from the Earthquake itself. So drop to 12. But this is kind of nice, right? Also because I'm taking away his potential copy targets. So this is good. Now he's got a Mana Vault. And I mean, it's looking quite good on my side of the board. Ah, and Julian taking two damage from the Surge. Surge is doing work. Yes. Very happy to finally see, see the Surge. And look at all the lands on the side of Julian. Six untapped lands. I think he's in trouble. I've got Power Surge. No, 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 no. He's tapping out. Is it another Triskelion? Jeez. I mean, good for Julian. You know, he's a great guy. So, you know, I'm happy for you. But... <sighs> I just want to see my power surge to do work. It's dealt two damage, I guess. But the bigger problem here, of course, is the strike. Like most creatures in my deck, like Dragon Whelp and Gargoyle, they're kind of nice targets for the for the Triskelion. Of course, Gargoyle, if it can keep enough red open, is really tough to get rid with the uh, with the trike. So hopefully, I can find a Gargoyle. That would maybe be one of the best options. Another really good option would be my Shivan Dragon. Playing two Shivan Dragons in this deck. And I've seen quite a lot of cards because I've had two or was it three Lantex activations this turn or this uh, this first game. So seeing a lot of cards in my deck, I guess. Tapping three. What are we going to see? Gargoyle would still be really, really good. I mean, yep, there's the Gargoyle. What's kind of nice here is, yeah, I got to keep the red mana open now to... Like, if he tries to kill it in response, I can pump it. And maybe we're going to be in for some, like, end step turn shenanigans where I have to be very strategic with how and when I pump the gargoyle. Ooh, this is really good. There's Titanus's coffin. That is a problem with the Triskelion on the board. In response to that, I'm going to play the Swords to Plowshare. So before the Titanus's coffin resolves, I'm going to play the Swords to Plowshare. Yeah, that makes sense. I wonder if you're Yurian, what, what you're going to do. I mean, he cannot kill the Gargoyle, so probably just three on my life total. So, I mean, I'm on 12 here. Or not. Okay, let's just see. I think Yurian is still kind of thinking about what he wants to do with the counters. Maybe not putting them all on my life or trying to kill the Gargoyle, perhaps. Okay, so two. Okay, one damage on the Gargoyle, two damage on me. Interesting. Wide at one damage. Oh yeah, Psionic Blast. Yeah, this is. I think this is good magic here from Yurian because now he can kill it, right? I can make it into a 2-5, but already at one damage marked on it. So Psionic Blast deals the other four. And of course, I do want to pump the red mana in there because of the power surge, but this is quite nice magic from Yurian because, yeah, now I can and not use the book and my Gargoyle is dead. On the other hand, he's taking damage as well, two from the Psionic Blast. I believe he's got a mana burn also. So he should drop to eight. I'm on 10, he's on 8, but I've got a book, so I'm feeling confident here. The only thing that's a little disappointing is that my power search is not doing much. Although I do see an untapped land on Yurian's side of the table, is it going to take a damage from my search? It would be kind of sweet. But then again, I have nothing to complain. It's, it's looking kind of okay for me. Tapping 4, okay, using the book. I mean, if I can't find an outlet... For my lands, right? I'm going to take three from my own search. It would drop to seven. Okay, I'm going to tap out another Gargoyle, perhaps. That would be the best card to play. Because that means some pressure on the board. Although there's Titans' Coffin. Okay, no, there's a Blood Moon. Okay, I mean, Blood Moon doesn't do much here. Actually, it only works against me. But it also means I can tap out. And uh, hey, a damage, I think, right? By Yurian uh, from the uh, Power Search. So that's sweet. There's a copy. I, it looked like he, copy, he copies the Tons' coffin, but I think you want to copy the book here. I think he's going to copy the book because the book is just such a good outlet and he's got a lot of land, so he can use those to start drawing cards. Yeah, and I've, I'm putting three counters on my power search because I want to keep track as to how much damage the search has dealt to my opponent each game because I'm really trying to, you know, 
find out how to use this card best. Anyway, tapping two red and a white here. Okay, there's a gargoyle. So again, keeping a white open, kind of indie, do, do I have another, exactly now tapping the white, I want to say, do I have another white spell like Disenchant or, you know, perhaps, Oh, look at me go here. I'm making it complicated for myself. Or perhaps another sword. So, although I've already played two sword supply shares, I think, and only one disenchant. So, anyway, passing the turn and keeping mana open to end draw a card and pump the gargoyle if I want to. And of course, you know, Yurian can use his uh, Tannis' coffin here. Ooh, tapping six again. Oh, my moti. I was worried about seeing trike number four, but this is a much bigger concern. My moti Jin. Oh, man. That is really bad. Like, I need another Swords to Plowshares? At least. But yeah, I've already played out two. I've got four in the deck, of course. Double Bolt could also do the trick. But if you've got Double Bolt, you always want to put it towards a life total of Yurian being on seven. Okay, so there's a Dragon Wolf. That's kind of, kind of good. I mean, I'm forcing Yurian to then choose, I guess, what he wants to put in the Tons' coffin. Ooh, choosing to keep a white open. So could that mean that I have the swords here? Playing the swords. So that's bye-bye. Oh, no, of course. He can put it in his own coffin. I didn't think about that. You can, of course, target your own creatures as well. That's why it works so good with the trike. Duh. Anyway, attacking for two. But I have to say, I mean, I'm not unhappy with the scenario. Because now he untaps. And remember, the creature comes out tapped. Right? So it's actually not that bad. And now I can swing in with the whelp. I, of course, I can put the whelp in the coffin, I guess. But I can deal another two, put him on three. And then I have to hope to have another bolt or something. Or more pressure. But my point here is that at least I'm really slowing him down with the swords. I mean, it takes out the Ma'amoti for two turns, basically. So that's not too bad. Anyway, okay, he's going to put the Dragon Whelp into the coffin. And of course, I'm going to pump some red man, I guess, into Gargoyle in this case, so I don't take any damage from my Surge. Again, Yurian tapped out, by the way. The Power Surge is really not working that well. Going to go on three. Yep, there it is. Lightning Bolt for the win in game one. But what an exciting game this is, man. I, li I like. Hopefully, Yurian game two will be just as exciting. Uh, we are going to dive into our sideboards and we will catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I'm one game up here. Yurian starting with an island, passing the turn. Let's see what I can do at my opener here, going to cart number eight. There's a mountain and just pass. So both of us having mellow starts, no mana volts. Ooh, there's a Felward Stone though. So Felward Stone turn two. Nice ramp here. Also for me, second land in the form of a basic planes there's a disenchant again targeting the uh the felwer yeah exactly it looked like the felwer stone was gonna stick but nope it's gone really trying to slow down yurian here i'm not sure if if it's a good decision though because there, there's so many good targets with the disenchant against yurian's deck so maybe should have just allowed should have allowed him to keep the uh, the felwer but yeah we'll see Tapping four, there's a coffin, for example. That would have been a nice target for the disenchant as well. Passing the turn here. There's a land that could animate swing in for two. That's an option. Tapping two red. Are we going to see a power surge? Or just a felwer stone, maybe? I mean, is power surge... Oh, there is a power surge. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And uh, there we see Yurian... I guess showing some cards in his sideboard, but there's the attack. So, Yurian dropping to 18. Ooh, is the power search now going to do some work? That would be nice. There's the pass, though. And now, I mean, the thing is, if I use, if I animate my factory, he can put it in the box. If I play out a creature, he can put it in the, in the box, right? And with the box, I'm referring to Tons' coffin. Now... You don't really want to do that. So even if I have a whelp now, should I play it out? I think I'm doing nothing. Look at that. I'm just passing the turn. So he's taking four damage here. Wow, going to drop to 14. So four damage from the power surge. And I wonder what I'm going to do on end step. So look at me go again, trying to track it with my, uh, 
with my beads here. So four damage. And there's a copy artifact, I guess, on the uh, on the coffin. But th this is actually not too bad because activating the coffin, there's a bolt on the life total of Yurian. Activating the coffin takes uh, three mana, I think, right? So he now can no longer activate it. There's a bolt. And now I can just put all my mana into the factory. Exactly, I'm just animating the factory three times. And Yurian is still looking at like another two damage from the surge next turn. Plus I get another attack with the factory. I think maybe I wouldn't even have played out the copy here. You know, because you want to keep that option open to use your Taunus' coffin. So another land, okay. I'm going to swing in for two. So he's on nine. So I could actually tap out, exactly tapping out my other lands, probably just to animate, yeah, animating the factory three times. No, I'm not. I'm playing a wheel. Oh, mana drain, though. This mana drain is really good. I, I think I shouldn't have played out the wheel here because with the mana drain, he's tapping out. He's got three mana extra. Let's see what he can do with that. Maybe that's going to help him to cast a Triskelion. Maybe if he has it in hand, he could do that now. But yeah, this mana drain, what a moment. Yeah, look at him go tapping three. Three plus three makes six. So, okay, only tapping two. So that's a good sign, I guess. Ooh, air elemental. Oh, that's not great. Air elemental on the board. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, there's a swords on the air elemental. It's something. Counterspell, though. Oh, <laughs> yucky. Oh, this is a problem. Playing another mountain. I mean, I can still do the trick, like animate my factory a zillion times. The problem is now he's got that air elemental. Oh, man. I need like Shiva next turn. That's what I need. That can maybe help me. Although he's got Taunus' coffin, he can just put it in the coffin. Yeah, it's, it's looking bad for me here. He's going to swing in for four. I mean, I'm still on 20, so it's not like I've lost already. But it was looking so good until I played that, uh, that Wheel of Fortune. And he played the mana drain, then he could cast the air elemental, like if it wouldn't have played the wheel. But anyway, let's see what I can do. There's a mana vault. Is he going to tap the vault? Is he going to go for six? Oh, man, this is, getting, <laughs> this is just going so bad. There's the trike for four. I mean, all of a sudden, like, Yurian has taken over the game from that moment, mana drain into air elemental. And from that moment onwards, he's really taken over your game too. I thought we were in for a very short game after my explosive start but okay that's something red elemental blast on the air elemental okay that's good that works now i have another problem which is the four fortress skeleton but hey at least this works i mean maybe i should just put all my mana in no i'm choosing not to because what i could have done here because yurian couldn't activate the tonsus coffin anymore is say in my own second main just activate my factory a zillion times so i don't take damage yeah, this is a problem. Like, even if I activate the... Yeah, I'm going to activate the factory. Is he going to kill it now? Okay, he's going to put it in the coffin. Then in response, I can just animate it like a zillion times still. So I don't take damage from that. I do take four here. I think one of the lines of play here could have been for Yurian to... And it's easy for me to say here, looking back at the game, but maybe to say, okay, I'm going to use my trike to kill your factory so that you cannot do this trick anymore and i've got my coffin and then on end step i can put it in the coffin get him back with three new three new counters but i mean this works maybe even better this is faster probably actually because now i'm already on eight so yeah it's looking super bad for me i mean first point of business is not a bolt why am i putting my mountain in the graveyard that's kind of weird that i don't understand why is my mountain in the graveyard? Anyway, that makes no sense, but I'm I'm dead. So, because <laughs> I'm getting damage here from, uh, from the trike next turn. Only having lands in hand. So game number two is won here by Yurian. And uh, yeah, wow, that was, I mean, it was a very quick game, but it was very interesting. Like I was winning, right? And then there was this mana drain moment and I was dead very quickly.
Anyway, it's 1-1 and I love that because that means we're gonna go to game number three. Game number three, here we go. So it's 1-1, who's gonna win the matchup? That's a question. What am I doing? Oh, I'm taking a mulligan. Changing my, my, yeah, taking a mulligan here. So gonna go down to six. Okay, that's not great. I mean, I'm on the play as well. Yeah, I'm on the play after losing that game, of course. So I mean, being on the play is good usually, but now with the mulligan, hmm, not so sure. Did Yurian also take a mulligan since he's still shuffling up? Let's see. No, he did not, I guess. Okay, so there is a Mishra's Factory passing the turn. So five cards in hand for me now and eight for Yurian. And ooh, there's a Volt. Uh-oh. Are we going to see like very quick magic from his side? I mean, you could play a land, animate, just deal two. That's kind of free damage. Looks like I'm in the tank already though. Perhaps I've got a Disenchant I could cast here. Nope, just attacking for two. I mean, you know, the thing I, I worry about the most with the Volt, of course, is him playing out a, uh, a um, Triskelion really early, but he could also use it to play out like a, an Air Elemental quite early. That's another line. Then again, maybe, okay, there's a Sage. Yeah, the Sage is quite good. I want to say maybe I've got like Sword Supply Shares in hand and I can just respawn to an Air Elemental. So, okay, there's a Sword Supply Shares on the Sage. There's a mountain for turn, so again, I can attack for two here. Okay, so there's already four damage kind of for free, I feel. So that's kind of nice. So Yudian here on 17, of course, because he gained a life from the uh, from the swords. But now he's got six mana. Like, this is crucial. If we're going to see a Triskelion here, that's probably going to be a problem for me. There's another Sage, okay. Not great, but I think a Trike would have been worse. Do I have a bolt for the sage? Do I want to? Or do I have another option? Maybe granite gargoyle, dragon whelp. There's the attack for two. Wow, so I mean that 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 Mishra's factory is doing work. The problem is that I don't do anything else here. Just passing the turn. That's really good news for Union. Oh, tapping six or not? Tapping six. Oh, there's the trike. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. Now he's, he gets so much value. Also with the sage, could sack the vault to draw another one. There's a quick disenchant though. At least there's not a good target. That's something. And he's going to eat it up. Yeah, so much value here. I mean, you could... Shouldn't have just played the disenchant on the vault. You know, makes you wonder. Then of course in response, he could have eaten, eat, eaten it up. Before he cast cast the trike, of course, I mean. Eh? Anyway, I'm I'm babbling, I'm sorry. Anyway, playing the swords here on the sage. So trying to keep the board pretty clear, finding a city of brass, taking a damage from that. There's a whelp. Okay, so again, this is not too bad. This is the power of white, right? I've got disenchant, I've got swords. I probably boarded in divine offering from the side. So I've got a lot of anti-artifacts, anti his creature cards. It's gonna be tough for Yurian here to kind of play through that. And at the same time, I've got a lot of pressure in my deck as well. I'm playing four whelps, four gargoyles, two shivans, and of course my, my factories that can deal damage. We already see Yurian on 16, probably going to take a damage exactly from the vault, dropping to 15. Next turn I can, you know, potentially attack for seven, which is huge. There's another island. I mean, four is not really the number that his deck works on well. Already lost two sages in the, in the, in the bin, exiled actually. Like his sages are really important for him, I feel. Does he have another sage? It would be sage number three. He's playing with a full playset, of course. A little bit in the tank here. What is he going to do? Tapping two blue. There's a copy. Okay, so is he, he's copying the mana vault. That's the only target. Interesting. That kind of indicates to me that he's got another trike in hand. Or maybe a Modi or something, which is quite scary as well. Look at me just attacking here. I wonder if I'm going to pump it to the full five. Oh, blue blast. I'm lucky here that Yurian isn't waiting for me to, to pump it up. Tapping four for a book. I'm going to take two damage. 
So I'm on 14. I'm really worried about the manifold. Like, I mean, he copied it for a reason, right? Probably going to play something big out with that manifold. Now he has to choose if he wants. So he could untap the vault and then for six play a trike. Not doing that, though, taking a damage. So maybe he's got an air elemental in hand or his Mahamoti. Gonna tap. Ooh, he's gonna tap six. It's gonna be Modi. Oh, Mahamoti. No. No. This is bad. I need a swords. Give me a swords. Maybe a swords from the top. I mean, I can. Gonna go to 13. Not quite sure why I'm not using my Mistress Factory for that mana, by the way. Because what am I gonna use the factory for? So I, I got to hope you're for Red Elemental Blast if, if I put it in the deck. And for Swords, both for instant speed. So there's no need to cast it now. Although we did see a counter spell from the side from Yurian. So I boarded in counter spells, I think. So doesn't have enough mana now. Because he's oh yeah, he also has, of course, a blue. Anyway, attacking here. Oh, it's taking the damage. It's taking the damage. I've got nothing against it here. Dropping to eight. I need to find an answer to this Modi or I'm done in two turns and Yurian will win this game. Do I have a Shivan? That would be really sweet. Oh, yep. There's the swords. So I found the swords probably from the top of the deck or else I would have fired it off before. So I found the swords. Now I can also attack for two if I want to or do I want to draw a card? That's kind of the question. Do I want to deal two damage? Or do I want to draw the card? And maybe I should go for drawing the card, even though that's going to give me a damage as well from my own City of Brass. But I'm kind of tempted to go for the card, to be honest. I would be on seven. I mean, Yurian is playing with Psionic Blasts, but I mean, seven, eight or seven doesn't make a big difference. And an extra card can make a huge difference. I do have two cards in hand still, though, but... They're probably not all too useful or else I would have played them out already. Really in the tank here. So I guess, I mean, if I deal two, he would drop to four. Look at this passing the turn. Yeah. So planning to use the book on end step. And Yurian has a lot of mana now, by the way. Yeah, using the book, going to go to seven. So it's seven against 16. That's quite scary. But I've got the book. The book should pull me through this, I hope. I really should be careful now being on seven with how often I'm going to use the City of Brasses. Ooh, look at that. I'm going to attack for two. Yes. Okay. So he's going to drop to 14. So 14 versus seven. But this is, I mean, the double City of Brass. You don't want to take two and go to five. Do you? I mean, as long as I'm not on four. That's the thing with drawing cards. Sometimes you just take too much damage because you just want to draw cards, you know? Well, let's, let's see what Yurian's going to do. Um, like if, he, if he can find a trike, play trike, play Cyanoblast, and it's the end of the game. He's won the match, right? So I'm feeling quite vulnerable. Okay, another copy. So probably going to copy the book here. Yeah, it's going to copy the book. That's, that's the best target by far. Yeah, using the book. And he wants to keep the blue mana. So it kind of shows. Ooh, take another damage. Disenchant on his gem day tome. Let's see if he's got another counter spell. No, he does not. So he's, he is going to lose the book again. I'm on six, though. Oh, oh, oh. This is a scary game number three. I can attack him again, put him on 12. It would be nice if I could like get like a bigger creature like Shivan, Dragon Whelp, something like that to kind of do some proper damage. And again, I've got this, this, this decision to make. Do I want to swing in with Factory, deal two? I guess I do. And then if I use the book, I'm going to take another one. We we'll drop to five. Oh, there's a Psionic Blast. Make it a little bit easier for me. To use the book. You know. Knowing that he played out at least one of his blasts. Okay. There's a granite gargoyle. Wow. That is nice timing. And that's a bit unfortunate of course for Yurian here. Because now maybe he would have 
wanted to use a psionic blast on a gargoyle instead then on the other hand you know it also saved you from two damage here they both have two power so it's not the worst thing but he does need something now he's on 12 so he would drop to 10. still it's a slow clock okay there's another psionic blast so i guess the other one he now got it from the top of the deck so he's probably not happy if he would have kept the psionic blast he could have won it right there but i guess he found it from the top and you know, you got to play with the information you have. You cannot assume that you're going to find that second one from the top of your deck, of course. And the silver lining here for Yurian is that he did, he was able to, to kill the creature threat. The problem, of course, for him at this moment in the game is that I've got that book. That is the big problem. I mean, I am on six, so two trikes, I'm dead. But, you know, that's going to be tough for him to get, I guess. Three cards in hand, passing the turn, okay. Can he find a trike? That's the thing he wants to do. Another island, it's not what you want in life at, at this point. Unless you can find a brain geyser. Ooh, there's a bolt. Gonna drop to seven. Gonna play another bolt. Another bolt, gonna drop to four. Very aggressive here. I wonder what that last card is. Could it be a wheel? Tapping, is it, oh, it's a power surge. When I tap the two red, like, is it, a, is it gonna resolve? Are we gonna see a counter spell? That is a big question now. If not, he's toast, I think. Oh, no counter spell, two juxtaposes in hand. That's a card, of course, that he wants to use together with the trike. But wow, 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 this is tough here for Nether Shadow. Oh, and power surge for the win, yes. Oh man, yeah, yeah, there was nothing he could do with those. Well, maybe he could have swapped a mana vault for the book. That's something, but they're not great uh, at that moment in the game. But yeah, wow, wow, wow. What an interesting matchup. And I mean, these two decks, I mean, they're very, very close together on power level, I feel. It's just kind of nice for me, I guess, playing red and white that I had so much answers. But yeah, really enjoyed this match. Thank you so much, Yurian, for, uh, for this game. And uh, yeah, it was just a lot of fun. I think your blue bots deck is really cool. And I now kind of see what you try to do with juxtaposes and the trikes. I think that's really sweet, that synergy. Um, but yeah, great match. Very happy that I've won. And on the card that I wanted to play with in this deck, Power Surge. So super happy to see the Surge doing what it's supposed to do in, uh, in game number three and winning me the match. So that is uh, fantastic. And now uh, before you go, I want to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. And please take a moment to like, share, and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then before you go, please consider becoming a patron as well. As a patron, you can become a financial supporter of the show and you can help me to keep the channel afloat. I already have over a hundred patrons, so you can join them on the Discord community and also you can join into the Timmy Talks online events. And at certain tier level, you can also play a game against me and maybe we can even make an episode together. So if that's something you're interested in, check out the Patreon page. You can find that on patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and have a look at all the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Zing!